Can you tell us uh, how you got into the YouTube game and how it has changed your life? Oh, man. <laughs> I started the YouTube thing. Like, my girlfriend had a channel for a while. She was doing, like, videos and stuff. And it was, like, popular in her, her forums and stuff, like these, these female forums she was in. So I started making, like, supplement reviews. And I put them on my blog. I had a blog that pretty much sucked. And I just, I can't type. I suck typing, but I got the gift of gab. I can talk all day long. So I started making these these videos, and nobody was really watching. I get like 50, 60 hits, whatever. And then, um, you know, I, I wasn't playing with YouTube at all. I kind of just left it around, left it alone for a while. And then my girlfriend Carrie at the time had sent me a video of Dave Pulsinella and Ian McCarthy, who I just met Ian this weekend for the first time. And Ian was a young, like 19 year old, snot nosed kid who looked like he didn't lift. And he was making fun of Dave Pulsinella, who had over 10,000 clients and was a national champion telling him how he was training wrong, eating wrong, dieting people wrong. And I was like, who the fuck is this kid? So I, I didn't even know who he was. I just watched the thing, and I made a video. And, I, and the video was spawned by um, Pauline Nordin from The Fighter Diet. You guys know who she is? Uh-uh. Pauline Nordin Fighter and Diet. Um, Rob Bailey, um, Dana Lynn Bailey's husband. Yeah. They both put up videos, and I watched them. I was like, man, these people just speak their mind. Like, they just flat out, they're blunt, and they don't give a shit. I'm like, more people should be like that. So I made the video about Ian just tearing him apart. <laughs> Little did I know the entire world fucking hated this guy already. I had no idea. <laughs> so they, had, you know, he said his fans which kind of came after me. But then Physiques of Greatness fans stuck up for me. The Muscle Twins, you know, all these people were coming on like TWA, like Twin Muscle Army and like POG. I didn't know what the fuck any of these things stood for. But they were arguing back and kind of pushing them off. And I'm watching all of a sudden there's like 15,000 hits on my video. I had 15,000 hits on all my videos together for the, you know, the three years I had it. I had no idea what it was, but people were subscribing. So as I started to subscribe, I put out videos and said, what else would people want to know about? Yeah, there's a trainer in my area who fucks people up by making them do diets with like only asparagus and stuff and giving them diuretics and fucking dropping them before the show. So he put something out about that, you know, and then there's like the big co the cardio controversy. Like, you shouldn't do cardio to get lean, you just restrict calories. They put out something about that. And, People were getting to feel more and more. They were like, well, you know, he's not just bashing Ian. He kind of knows what he's talking about about these other things. And then Ian had actually kind of come at me all of a sudden out of the blue. So I was like, fuck that. I made another video back to him. It was actually called Ian McCarthy is a punk bitch. That's what I titled it. <laughs> I pulled down in like less than 10 minutes. You know, YouTube pulled it down and gave me a strike. And like, you can't argue with somebody on YouTube who's another YouTube like uh, celebrity or whatever. And I was like, fuck. So I made another one, it was like, you know, Ian part two, and that one took off again. So it was really me speaking my mind about Ian, which is what everybody else already thought, but, you know, didn't want to say or didn't want to make a video about, really started to propel this thing forward. And as it did, you know, people started to take notice. Like the first time I went to a, um, an expo after that was the Olympia, and like Chris Jones from Zeke's Greatness came up to me, he's like, hey man, I like your stuff, and da 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 da, let's you know, do a little filming. Like him, Mark Lobliner, Big J Extreme, like all these guys started coming to me, because they like the fact that, you know, I just shot my mouth off. Like, I just don't have a filter sometimes. I just don't care. And it wasn't about making money. It was about speaking my mind and really just not giving a shit. So from there, it was like, you know, what? I didn't even know you could make money at it. Jason Blaha was the one that told me you should monetize the channel because eventually you can make money at it. And I was like, I don't really know. You know, I don't give a shit. I just want to speak my mind. So I monetize it. And you make a little bit of money off the monetization, but you make money off the sponsors. You know what I mean? Once you have that following the sponsors start to come around. So next thing you know, it was like, we want to bring you here for an expo or there for an expo. And I'm like, why? What, what the fuck? Why would you want to bring me there? Because people want to meet you. And I'm just like, I don't get it. Okay, fine. You know, so I went to the Olympia, <laughs> uh, the Jerry Beck's booth for uh, Iron Asylum. Had a few people come. I was like, all right, this is cool, you know, whatever. Next, there was the uh, Arnold again. And by the time we hit the Arnold, Isatori, I'd been involved with Isatori a little bit. And I went to their booth. And that's when it really started to hit me because I would walk through the crowd people would stop me. They would grab me and be like, oh my God. And I'm like, I'm looking around like, I think Jay Cutler's standing around somewhere. I'm like, or like I was sitting down eating and this kid came over. He's like, oh my God. And he sat down. He said, when you're done eating, can we take a picture? And I was like, oh, we'll take it right now. You know, like it just hit me that people are paying attention more and more. And, uh, and it wasn't just for the, the bodybuilding stuff. It was the other content I was putting out while talking about how I had a heroin addiction for three years and I'm 15 years sober. You know, all these different things that I talk about hits home with different people in different ways because we're all brought together by bodybuilding and iron, but everybody has their own things that they have issues with and troubles with. They, they think they're alone. They think that that's the only thing that we have linking us together is the bodybuilding thing, and that's not true. You know, pretty much everybody's been through a breakup. I'm going through one right now. Everybody's been through, you know, some kind of substance abuse. Whether you've been shit-faced that fell down a flight of stairs one night, 
or whether you have actual problems that you can't quit. I mean, everybody has something that they're dealing with, and nobody wants to talk about it. And that's the thing is, like, I'm just talking about it. I just could give a shit less. Like, if you want to judge me, judge me. If not, don't. And once that started coming out, like, the numbers really started increasing. I think I'm about 79 or 80,000 subscribers now, a few years into this. Um, you know, I made a lot of friends, like Furious Pete, Big J, Mark Mobliner, Rich Piana. I mean, all these guys. I mean, I've had the opportunities to work with, um, I was the first one to have Phil Heath on before, you know, Tiger Fitness has had him and other YouTubers have him. I was the first one to have him on due to the fact that his uh, manager, Matt Daniels, actually saw my YouTube channel and contacted me and said, you know, we want to we want to work with you because here's the situation. Like Phil's having trouble with his YouTube people and his copyright things are all fucked up. What do we do? I helped him out with that. In return, he's like, we'll give you a, a, a flat out interview about anything you want to talk about. Like, you know, I'm not becoming friends with Phil and Matt. And I mean, it's just, it's taken off, you know, to the point where, you know, now people hire me not based on, you know, what they read about me or what they heard about me, but what they see on YouTube. Like if someone hires me, they know they're going to get tough love. They're going to get no remorse whatsoever if they fuck up their diet. Like, that's what they want when they hire me. Whereas before, you know, it's harder to get your name out there and harder to push your product like that if you're, you know, if you're not known. But at least they know what they're getting if they watch the channel. So, I mean, as far as business, it's completely changed my life. As far as being in the, the public eye, it's completely changed your life. I think YouTube in general has completely changed my life all the way around. Wow, man. That's awesome. So then, uh, I mean, gosh, I mean, I'm sure that's how... I think I even I even talked to you about this at the expo. That so this is how do you like working for five percent nutrition and Rich Piana? Dude, it's badass, dude. Yeah, there's a bunch of guys that you know, and myself included. Like you get judged on your appearance, whether it's you know in everyday life or what, even if it's at the you know the bodybuilding stuff. If you walk into a Seven Eleven and you're jacked up, you get judged immediately. Right, big dumb meathead, steroid user, whatever. You know, when you walk into the expo, you know, everybody's a big dumb meathead steroid user, but you have tattoos. You know what I mean? So it's like you get judged no matter where you go. Well, when Rich uh, Rich has a guy that first contacted me and he said, you know, what do you think about linking up with 5% Nutrition? I said, you know, I love the channel and I think Rich is a good dude, but is that a dog back there? <laughs> yeah. It's like my cool. great day and she's trying to get on film. Like, How was that? I just saw something moving around in the back. <laughs> And uh, I said, you know what, just send me the products first because I want to make sure I like the products before I say yes or no. And they did, and the products are great. I said, you know what, this is a good deal. So, uh, you know, we decided to kind of join forces with that. And I didn't know he was going to be signing as many people as he did, but he wants to have a lot of people on the 5% label. And he signed some pretty awesome people. So the first time we all got together was the Olympia. And uh, there's guys there like Big Boy, you guys know who he is? Jake? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and squats like without holding the bar. Like, yeah, yeah. You know, um, Viking, Eric was out there. I mean, guys that, you know... I'd seen on the videos and stuff, and they're intimidating as hell when you first walk up to them. So, you know, Eric, I mean, he says, like, Viking on his face and, like, soul collector above his eye. You know what I mean? Yeah. The first thing is you think, like, soul collector, shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> he's a big <laughs> fighter, but, like, you walk up to him, he's just, like, the nicest guy. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, he can kill you, but he's, like, the nicest guy. Jake, <laughs> massive and strong as can be, at agile and stuff, but just a really nice, easygoing guy. So, like, at the Olympia, I was, like, you know, I turned to Carrie and I said, I was, like, I feel more at home with these guys than anybody else I've ever been with in any of these expos, period. And then what's like the 5% after party, and it was cool because they it had like all these bowl, like punch bowls set up with all the new all day you made flavors in it. And like people were drinking BCAAs instead of drinking alcohol. Nobody was getting messed up on booze. They were shooting shots of BCAAs and hanging out and getting tattoos. And we had the contest that, you know, Rich sponsored, I forget, it was like the Olympia, the Mr. Mrs. Sin City or whatever he called it. It was just, like, clean, fun with everybody just getting along. And, you know, everybody kind of just had, like, the same thing. You know, it was like, we like to work out, we like to do this stuff, and everybody was just cool. And that has just progressed. He's hired more people that, you know, from that was the Olympia. So then at the Arnold, that was last year? Last year at the Olympia. So then we had all oh, the LA Fit Expo. It was the next big one. You know, and the booth got even bigger. You know, we have more products out now. You know, I have tons and tons of Love It, Kill It stuff that I wear all the time that, you know, it gets people's attention. You know, I was on a plane coming back from uh, the Arnold. I was sitting next to a military guy, and he saw the 5% on the side of my hat. And he was like, what does 5% mean? And that's the biggest thing. People ask, what does 5% mean? You know, you walk down the street with a big, giant 5% on your hat. It's, it's curiosity. They're like, what does it mean? And once you tell them, you know, 5% of the general population will do whatever it takes to accomplish their goals. And they're like, oh, is it a bodybuilding thing? You're like, yes, but Steve Jobs is a 5%er. 
You know what right. I mean? Bill Gates, Microsoft, five percenter. Donald Trump, five percenter. Like those guys are five percenters. It's everything. You know, like it's not just that. It applies to everything else. And once they see that or they hear that, you know, like our vet, Dr. Carrier, she's this amazing vet at Banfield. She asked about the five percent thing, and she's like, "I'm going to go on the website and buy a five percent shirt." That's an awesome concept. You know what I mean? Like it just it speaks out. And now, you know, just like there's like you know, flag nor fail, and you know, animal. 5% is transcending the bodybuilding world and becoming more of a movement, like a worldwide movement is what's happening right now. And it's, it's pretty cool to see. It's awesome. So have you ever thought about hosting your own bodybuilding show in your town? Um, I do some promotion with Sean Ray for the okay. Sean Ray Classic here. Um, I'm a sponsor and I do some promoting for it. But my, uh, my buddy, who his name's Richard Siegel, and right now he's got, let's see, he helps promote... I mean, all the shows in Maryland, but one in Wyoming and one in Vegas, too, or something like that. I used to train Rich. I actually helped him get his pro card in 2010. I trained him for his pro card. And I remember seeing what he had to do to be a show promoter. I mean, you talk about running around in nonstop stress. I mean, yeah, by the end of the year, hopefully you make out well, you know, money-wise and stuff. But the amount of stress that goes into that, I don't think I – mean, it's a full-time job. That is absolutely a full-time job. So you can't really do – you can maybe take out some clients at the gym, but you're not going to be doing a whole lot of personal training. You're not going to be doing a whole lot of traveling. Like, your ass is pretty much just pushing that show year-round. You know, and Sean, you know, is on the east, uh, the west coast. He'll have to fly over here to Maryland to go to these other shows and stuff just to show up and make appearances and stuff so you can hand out flyers. Like, you know, that all comes out of his pocket flying across the country a few times a year. Plus, you know, having the, the venue set. He's already had to pay for the venue for a few years. Trying to get the sponsors to re-sign every year because, you know, the bigger sponsors and the more sponsors you have, the more money you make. You know, all that stuff takes a lot of time. There's a lot of stress. And it's not, you know, if you have a name, like let's say you came out, like, you know, like Jay Cutler has a name. He can pretty much stamp his name on there and he'll have someone run it for him and then they'll get paid. But, like, if I did it, I mean, I'd have to do everything myself and there's no way in hell that I'd be able to, to deal with that at this point. Maybe if I had nothing else going on, I could put everything into it. It might be, but I mean, other than that, it's just, it's too much work and too much stress for probably not enough profit. Gotcha. So with everything that's going on now, just give us a little insight of what your typical day looks like, like a day for Jerry. So my typical day, like tonight, I'll probably be up till about maybe 3.30 or 4 o'clock in the morning answering emails. I answer all my own emails. So it doesn't matter whether someone hits me up for some advice or clients that have right now in 90 clients in 18 countries. Wow. So some of these people are up at different times than I am. Like there's different time zones and their day is my night. So I'll be, you know, interacting with them until about 3, 30, 4 o'clock in the morning. I'll go to bed. Tomorrow I don't have a 7 a.m. client. So I'll get up probably about 9, 30, 10 o'clock in the morning, do my cardio, which because I'm a week out from a show, I'll do 35, 40 minutes of cardio in the morning. I'll have my first meal. I'll get right on my emails again. So I'm emails or I'm editing for YouTube, or I'm shooting more videos. So I try to shoot as many videos as I can every day and just have them stored in the computer so that I have, like, a surplus of them. So when I get something in my head, I immediately go video it. If I wait on it, I forget it. I forget what it's about. I don't script anything. I don't do retakes. I just go. So as soon as I have something in my head, I have to do it. Even if I'm working in emails, I'll stop, put the camera on, and, and record it right away. So I'm either rendering and uploading that stuff or doing the emails till about... I don't know, maybe noontime, then I'll have my next meal. I, when I get hungry, I eat. So about noontime, 12.30, something like that. I'll have my next meal, go back to the emails and stuff like that again. Every in between, I'll take my dog out, my little bulldog, Bruno, and then um, have one more meal and head to the gym. So by the time I get to the gym, it's probably about 3.30, 4 o'clock. I'll train until about 5. I'll have my uh, post-workout shake, then I have clients from 5, 6, 7. So by the time 8 o'clock comes, I'm done with my clients. I do another cardio session then. By the time I'm done with that, if I have to go tanning or something, which, you know, today I went tanning, tomorrow I'll have to go to. I'll go tanning. I'll make it home by, like, 9 o'clock, 9.30, somewhere around there. I'll talk to Carrie for a little bit while, you know, I'm unwinding. I'll have a meal. And then when she goes to bed, I go right back on the computer again until, like, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock in the morning. Probably about 3.30 in the morning, I'll take a shower and go to bed. I mean, wow. it's pretty much the same all day long. The travel schedule comes in sometimes. Like, I just found out today I'm going to be going to um, Orlando for the Orlando Europa, May 1st and 2nd. Yeah. So that's like the next trip that, you know, I'll be heading out on. So, like, you know, when that stuff happens, not only am I traveling, but I have to answer all my emails. Because so I have people that are competing in shows. They can't wait three or four days to me to get back to them. So, means when I land, I immediately start on the plane and answer emails. Go to the hotel, check in, and then uh, depending on what's going on, I'll have to do, catch up on my emails. Which, after, if I go on a three-hour flight, I could possibly have 50 to 100 emails by the time I land. 
So I'll have to go through those, you know, do everything I got to do, get to the expo all day. I can't answer them all day at the expo. So it means when I'm done at the expo, back to the hotel, train, eat, or, you know, maybe eat busy. Maybe I don't even train. Who knows? Sometimes that goes by the wayside. Back to the emails again, shower, bed, and do the same thing the next morning again. So it's, there's not a whole lot of time left for like downtime. Like my carry gave me a PlayStation 4 for Christmas. I haven't played it in probably two months. I just, I don't have time. Wow. Jeez. So, Gosh, uh, so what kind of, well, I mean, you just touched on the, the show you're going to be going to, but what are some other things in the works coming down the pipe for you? Well, I was planning on possibly hitting every show in Maryland for <clears throat> because I'm already there and I maintain my condition pretty easily. Um, so that would be like in June. There's another Dallas Europa in June, which I'm looking at. Sean Ray Classic is in um, August, which I'm promoting and, and sponsoring. And then uh, the Olympia is at the end of September again. It's always the end of September, so the, then the Olympia again. So that's, like, pretty much what's just, you know, on the table now. When things pop up, and it's like, oh, you know, there's a Connecticut Europa, too, which is probably about a four-hour drive from where I'm at now. I mean, you know, flights are cheap to get to me at Connecticut. There's a possibility I may hop on a flight, you know, get up to Connecticut for two days for that expo, too. You know, i got to get home at some point to see my family that lives in Rhode Island. Be taking a flight up there to do that. Um, you know, it just, it depends. Like, things pop up all the time. So, you know, as far as what's on the table now, I mean, it's, today it's one thing, but tomorrow it could be more. So, I know we, we have a lot of subscribers, and I'm, I'm pretty sure that most of them do subscribe to you. But if they don't, and they want to know how to get a hold of you as far as, are you taking on new clients? And if you are, how do they get a hold of you? Well, right now, as, as of right now, um, and I made this public on my Facebook and stuff. I'm actually going through a breakup with my girlfriend. We're splitting, leaving in amicable terms and, you know, remaining best friends. Um, I am going to start taking more clients in the gym because I'll have time to be able to do that. The time that I normally spend with her, I don't have time to, to do other things. So, um, yeah, I'll be taking on a couple more clients in the gym. Online clients I'll be taking probably about five or six more. Other than that, I'll shut it down. I can't juggle as many as, you know, I can't juggle more than 100. It's just not going to happen. Um, anybody can contact me at bioestrutraining at gmail.com. That's my email. I answer all of them myself. It doesn't even matter if, you know, someone sends me an email just to say, hey, I like your stuff. I'm going to answer back. The only ones I don't answer are the assholes that are like, bro, you talk about steroids, so you have to sell them to me. I automatically don't answer that one. And then I automatically don't answer like, yo, what steroids should I take? Like, those are the only emails that I don't answer. I just automatically delete them. But anything other than that, I figure if someone's taking the time to email me, then I should at least take the time to say thank you or, you know, give them a couple words back. So they can get a hold of me like that anytime. Okay, great. Well, man, we just want to say thank you so much for the interview and we're big fans and we appreciate, you know, I want to say to the viewers, this guy, I just tapped him on the shoulder. He was walking through the expo and he took, he didn't make me stand in a line. He didn't make me do any of that stuff. We sat there and had a, a conversation enough for me, for me to reach out to him. So we appreciate it, man. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, I still get a trip on it when someone taps me on the shoulder and goes, "Hey, buy OS three. I'm like, "Yeah." I mean, it doesn't it doesn't register still. You know, like I've been going to these expos for so many years that I can't. I still am like, "Why the hell do these people want to take a picture with me?" <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's it's cool for me, but you know, it's still shocking when that shit happens.